it helps the player to be busy what to play. Also for the attackers, uh, do you think that this is the same? Sometimes I get mad on players. Why? Because at least they are busy with me. That you can score with hitting with your elbow instead of your hand. You come back about your command and I don't agree completely. Because the way you set is showing your character. I mean, first them two big parts. You have money time, learn to know yourself. This and you give me great sets and I was uh, killing every ball, but... <laughs> uh, it was, uh... As a player, to go on the court and not look to the scoreboard. I know it's very difficult. Young players can spike good all the time. But old players can spike better at the end of the set. So you always see setters playing a different game in the first part of the set. I mean, a setter can have to explain me what his best set. If we talk about Simon, the middle blocker, I would always use him in money time. Because... So I'm glad that uh, Vital Heinen is uh, with me at uh, Volley Coach Show podcast. Uh, the Volley Coach Show podcast is uh, for players, for intermediate players, for coaches, uh, and it should be about uh, uh, concrete advice uh, for these uh, volleyball uh, players and fans. And uh, we were speaking uh, with Vital about one topic, uh, which is very interesting, not only for me, but I believe for all our uh, listeners. And this is uh, that uh, once uh, in the summer, you are commenting on Volleyball World TV and you said uh, something that the set is divided into three parts that uh, in the first part it's a uh, beginning the middle part and the, at the end and that some teams are using for example you were speaking about Simon that Simon is getting out of balls uh, at the end uh, of the set so uh, can you please tell us more about uh, this uh, idea of you? Well, I, I don't think it's, it's only an idea of me it's an idea of a lot of coaches I mean first them two big parts you have money time Yeah, and I think we always look to how players are performing from 1990 on, from 2020, when the score is not two, not more than two points difference. Yeah, so we make always two parts. One is like just general, and then after 2020, less than two points difference. And then the other division, in that way, like we know, like it's there's clearly a difference in playing money time and not money time from so many setters, eh? how they play, but even how spikers spike. Eh? The other part is, of course, there are like three moments in the match. And I often tell I was a setter myself. And what's the moment you have the most nervous as a setter? It's not the last ball of the match. It's the first ball of the match. So you always see setters playing a different game in the first part of the set. And you have to come into the set. And that mostly goes, it doesn't have to be, but eight was, for a long time, there was eight, the technical timeout. I would even make it now to five, six points, seven points is the start of the set. And then you have this middle part, and the middle part is, is a bit more like, it's not so stressy. You can try to do different things. And then after 16, 17, 18, you go to the last part where you know that you have only one chance. Yeah, that's a, the, the, you have to make the right choice. So it, I think it's very logical to, to analyze, I mean, setters for sure, not only on what they set, but also on which moment they set in the hell. And that I think, um, for example, I, I don't know which match you were talking about, but I can imagine that in, if we talk about Simon, the middle blocker, I would always use him in money time because the guy is over 30, maybe for over 35. He knows how to spike because typically is that, why, what's the difference between young and old players? Young players can spike good all the time, but old players can spike better at the end of the set. I think, I believe that experience is helping you in the end of the set. So I find it very logical to use an, an, old, an old player at the end of the set more than the beginning. Yeah, and this kind of things I think I find, yeah. Um, we, we get more and more data, so it's more and more possible to, to follow how a setter or how a team, how a coach is thinking. So if you were the coach and you were play uh, and you would play against me as a coach, uh, you would say that uh, maybe at the last of the set uh, you want uh, uh, to take care or block or to watch more for some uh, experienced players or what would be the advice if we take a, a normal standard player and he is uh, listening to our podcast and then uh, he would uh, like to improve. Uh, what would be your advice uh, for him? But, I mean, first I can talk about setters. Eh? I, I think it's very interesting that a setter is writing down 
when he's playing what. I think it's important that setters learn to understand what they are playing, but not only what, but on which moment. Yeah, th th there's much more. I think you can make, we get more and more analyzers, but sometimes too much, but um, you see setters playing a certain ball after timeout. Yeah, and I think being aware is the first step. Eh? So if I advise players, but that's later on, if you ask more about it, what's so important is learn to know yourself. Yeah, if you want to achieve something in volleyball, but if you want to achieve something in sport or you want to achieve something in life, the, the most important is to learn to know yourself. I mean, I, I can talk on this moment. I'm coaching a club here in Turkey with two young setters from, I think, both 21 years old. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My main thing is not only to learn them to set better, but my main thing is to learn them to know themselves better. Like, what is your best set? I mean, a setter can have to explain me what his best set. And that can be very specific. It's not just the ball to four, but it can be if the passing is three meters from the net and I don't have to play too long to position four, six meters, then I'm very precise. But if I'm moving, if I'm moving behind or moving forward, I lose precision. I think setters has to learn on which moment they are very good. And so that I think, yeah, like if you ask me specific over about, about this 8, 16, 25, but I think it's a general thing. Huh? Yeah, you do this to understand yourself better or like to understand the set of the other team. It's, I, I can tell a small story about that. Uh, for me here, coming in Turkey, it was a lot of new players. And sometimes I tell to my team the character of the setter without I ever was speaking to her. Because the way you set is showing your character. Yeah, and it's very interesting to analyze like, mm, this person, this person is not so an easy one. Because she, she's doing this and this and this and this and this action in a row. Yeah, and see how she's doing. Just by looking how you play, you can see character. And I think that is very interesting. Like you turn it around, I think look to your setting to understand your own character. Yeah, and I think it's important that both are in balance. Eh? Setters have to play with their own character. Oh, that's uh, interesting. Uh, I cannot speak uh, as a setter because I never played setter, but you were playing great setter when we played uh, uh, together in Mazek. It's true that uh, sometimes I know uh, some attackers uh, and uh, they are just playing great and at the end of the set uh, they are watching their hands you know what was the mistake why i hit out and if you see these uh, players then you are sure for me i would be sure that uh, if i play on the other side he's uh, nervous or he's not sure at the end of the set to make some points but uh, also for the attackers uh, do you think that this is the same that they should uh, know first uh, themselves uh, to play better volleyball uh, of course of course but i mean you bring something up where i'm a bit like a there's coming the word flow. Eh? Yeah, flow is the state when you forget time and points. I mean, the goal is as a player to go on the court and not look to the scoreboard. I know it's very difficult. I remember when I was 20 years old, one coach was telling this to me and I said, coach, go away, you know nothing about volleyball. Of course I look to the scoreboard. Eh? Yeah, and I understand that <laughs> players look to the scoreboard, but in basic idea, you should be able not to look to the scoreboard. And I'm busy a lot with that. For example, having a very strict tactical plan helps players not to think about scoreboard. Yeah, a tactical plan has two elements. Yeah, it's one, it's tactics, maybe it's good. But even if the tactics are not good, it helps the player to be busy what to play. Yeah, so I believe that it's very important to stay in this, it's called the zone, like how to play, how to be busy, what to do. Okay, I'm in set of three, they spike mostly diagonal, this opposite on back hole, I have to close the line. If you with those things are busy, yeah, you don't have time to think because a player who starts to think about the score and about missing a ball, we all know he will miss the ball. Yeah, and I think that's, it's a big challenge to learn to make players always be busy with the action. Eh? Now you say, how can you do that? I believe strongly that you can do parts on training. Yeah, uh, we, we work a lot with handling pressure on training. I, I give you, uh, not in spiking, but today, for example, I give an exercise on my players in serving. They have to serve eight balls. They can make one mistake 
But if they make a second mistake, I eliminate them and they are obliged to run around the court. And it's such a big punishment, not the running, they can run very slow, but the big punishment is to be eliminated out of an exercise. Yeah? So you learn pretty is very busy like how to execute things. And I think that spikers can learn also in spiking, like what I have to do in this moment. And not looking to score but it's 24, 23, what I have to do. Like what, what is what's happening when I miss, we lose the set. If you think like this, it's over. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I'm also speaking to my young players when I'm coaching that uh, don't look to score because every point is the same important. It doesn't matter if it's 1-1 it one, one or 24-24, every point, every touch is same important. And uh, sometimes they listen, sometimes they don't listen. But don't you think that uh, some players, uh, because I remember when I was professional players, have also troubles to remember all these uh, strict uh, plans and ideas uh, because some coaches are giving uh, 10, 12 uh, papers uh, with tactical preparation and then it's not so easy for example for middle blockers to uh, remember everything and we have to or you have to as a coach to remember them then in this uh, zone in this rotation uh, they have to do uh, something what we what you uh, what you agreed before but i think there i i come back now i come back to i, I say the, today all the time the same know yourself yeah and I try to help there, like not every middle blocker needs the same number of information. I mean, now we sit here and I hope he's not listening now, but he will listen later. Our friend Martin Nebel, yeah, yeah, we played both with him in the same team. I would judge Martin, not the guy to give too much information because that's mm -hmm. nothing for him. He had this feeling, he had this idea how to play. And if you put him full of information, yeah, he would just be lost on the court. Yeah? So you have to see the person, the quality, and how they are handling this, but that you have to give. That, that's a way of looking like, but no information, I think, is even less. I don't believe in no information, but then you have to look how much can a player take so that on the moment of, in a difficult moment, the player can use information. You come back about your comment, and I don't agree completely. I, you say every point is the same. I try to turn around. On my trainings, we have a lot of exercises where some points are so much more important. Yeah, we play something, we play for uh, five, ten minutes, and then it's coming one ball, and that one ball decides the whole ten minutes. And in this way, I want to prepare my players for this 23-23. Yeah, because even if you tell 100 times it's the same ball, sorry, on 13-13 in tiebreak, everybody knows this is the important ball. Yeah, so that's why I do the opposite. That I train on training like, okay, now it's coming a ball who has so much value. I mean, I, I sometimes I remember in the past, I was doing sometimes even an exercise of one hour and then one ball was making one hour more training or finishing the training. But, but that has stopped. That has stopped because it was too big. You understand? The pressure on training was too big. Some players came to me and said, coach, it's easy to play a game than the training. Of course, then then you have to balance. But I think you can you can imitate the pressure from 23-23 on match. You can slightly imitate. Maybe not all the same, but you can do things. I believe in that. Yes, uh, you are right that uh, we have to. Uh create conditions in the training that are similar to the practice because not some not always it's possible we cannot uh, uh, simulate uh, the whole full of uh, 5,000 people watching and uh, pressing you if you play outside but on the other hand in the training as you said we can create uh, these uh, more important uh, points um, and uh, what would you be what would be your like uh, main final uh, advice for uh, players uh, regarding these uh, stages of the set? Uh, should they be more concentrated uh, during the end of the set or should they be somehow uh, more relaxed uh, during the during the most important points? Uh, it is, you know, a couple of years ago, I was talking with a Belgian company who told me that they had a, a device, they could put something on your back and they could measure your focus. Yeah, like, because what you ask, I have no answer. It's, you have to stay in this zone. Too much focus will make you make, you will make mistakes. Too low focus, you also will make mistakes. And it's a, it's a zone in between. Now, I have to be honest, if you come in the fifth set to 13-13, 
mostly the players are too high in focus because everybody knows it's mm -hmm. so crucial. So I think there I would go for more relaxing things or make them not think about the score. Eh? Yeah, and they're like, and that's what often people don't understand. Sometimes I get mad on players. Why? Because at least they are busy with me and not with the scoreboard. Yeah, so there are different ways, but in general, I believe to relax a bit. The more, the more crucial, the more cool you have to be. Yeah, I think if you have, if you are leading by far, yeah, that's the moment that you have to take care that you're not going too fast down. Yeah, like you, you start a set, you come like 16, 10 in front. That I find the most difficult because there's the chance so high that you will think, ah, easy match today. I don't believe that 23, 23 will be always. Then, and then it's much more uh, important to relax. Like, okay, I know what I have to do. I know have, what is the most important and not, and not make them think too much. Yeah, and I think I start now, I'm a coach who changed from men volleyball to women volleyball. I see this even in women's volleyball much more clear that I have to do my maximum effort that in difficult moments, my players just stay not relaxed, it's not the right word, but not with a too high focus. Yeah, and I mean, in the beginning of the, uh, I mean, beginning here, of, you invited me to give some advice to players. So I was only thinking very short about it because advice to my players is always have fun. Yeah, <laughs> so it, it, it's hard, half smiling, but even on this 23, 23, try to see the fun of the situation. Yeah, because if you cannot enjoy this, it's so hard and you will never enjoy those moments. And we all know that sometimes you will lose, sometimes you will win. But it's so important that you learn to enjoy the moment from 23, 23. Yeah, that you can have a smile, that you can score with hitting with your elbow instead of your hand, and then you have to laugh with it. I think it's very important that you enjoy difficult moments. <coughs> and so that's my, my big thing. It's don't make the mistake of make it too serious, but take care that you stay in a very cool way and can solve things. Oh, these are very interesting uh, things, uh, what you say. And uh, I would like to thank you for this uh, short uh, podcast uh, that you spent with us. And I believe that uh, many players will take uh, inspiration from you and uh, that uh, they will improve as a volleyball players because this is uh, my goal and the goal of, uh, I think, all the coaches to improve their players. And uh, you are right that sometimes we are pushing too much the players, uh, wanting them to uh, play the game uh, at 100%, but uh, the fun should be there always and uh, again thank you very much Vital that you uh, that you speak with me today and uh, for this uh, time with you thank you but I, I want to end with a with a small story yeah I mean we played together Yeri very long time and you were a very professional player yeah but I always remember the, our first meeting because also there our first meeting we went to get together to a bar and you were asking a half a liter of beer and in Belgium was <laughs> almost not existing. Yeah, and we were sitting and drinking that and I was like, wow, you see, that was our first meeting together. Yeah, <laughs> and it's not about this beer because that's not so important, but it's about this having fun in what you're doing. Yeah, and I think that is so important that we can give, we, we cannot be too demanding our young players. It's not easy to be young today. So it's so important that they can enjoy what they're doing. Yeah, and that's what I remember from our first meeting very, very, very long time ago, Yeri. Thank you. I thought that uh, we were just meeting at the practice and you give me great sets and I was uh, killing every ball, but <laughs> Not possible. I, it was, uh... <laughs> Not possible. <laughs> okay. Okay, so thank you, Ritar, for your time and I hope uh, to see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.